Now, I love chocolate. You love chocolate. We all love chocolate. So when the talk called Hacking Chocolate came through, I had to accept it. And uh, he asked to go last because he had something to give out. So that's all I'm going to say. So please welcome Sean. Uh, chocolate, from that first savory bite to the complex flavors dancing across your tongue to the happy, semi-orgasmic feeling that you get after you've eaten a good piece of chocolate, you come to the realization that chocolate truly is the food of the gods. And surprisingly, chocolate is actually healthy for you, provided that the cacao content is greater than 80%. Chocolate has lots of antioxidants, cacophenols, co theobromine. Studies have actually proven that, or suggest that chocolate can actually help lower your Heart rate or heart pressure, blah 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 blah. Moving on. Okay, so one of the best ways to get your daily dose of one of the best ways to get your daily dose of chocolate is through truffles. And the easiest way to make truffles is you take about 10 ounces of chocolate, some butter, some heavy cream, and some flavor. This isn't far less healthy than chocolate is by itself. You combine these things together, and unfortunately, everybody has the stuff that you need to combine these things in your kitchen because all you really need is a pan, a metal bowl, some water, some spoons, some stuff to mix things together. Now, if you're doing a lot of truffles, like some of us might be doing. There's some other equipment that can make it a lot easier and a lot more consistent in your output. So the first thing you're going to do when you get started is you're going to find yourself a pot, and you're going to put some water in it, and you're going to start to boil. That's you turn the fire on to high until the bubbles come up. Once the bubbles start coming up, you put the metal bowl on the top of it, turn the fire back down to medium, that's the bubbles come a little bit, and this forms a very primitive double boiler. If you actually have a double boiler, you can go ahead and use that. Pour in the 10 ounces of chocolate and the butter, and you're going to slowly mix this together until it starts to melt. And you're going to know that it's melting because it'll look like molten chocolate. Uh, resist, <laughs> resist the temptation to, dick your, to stick your hands into it. That comes later. Once it's completely melted, you're going to take the heavy cream, take the chocolate off of the pot, pour the half cup of heavy cream into the pot, and mix it completely with a whisk, making sure not to add any extra air or various other things into the chocolate. Once you get to a nice, smooth, velvety consistency, you have what we call ganache. Now, if you're only adding one flavor, you pour that flavor and mix it in, and you're done. But you know, one flavor is not fun. So it's best to divide it up into a number of different bowls, mix the flavors in consistently and thoroughly. Once you have all the flavors mixed in completely, you're going to cover them with saran wrap and stick them into a nice, cool, dark place. Nice, cool, dark place. Yes, like a refrigerator. Um, this enables the ganache to cool down to a semi-hard consistency so that you can work with it later. And like all tasty things that you're leaving alone for a while, you want to make sure that it's you know, nice and safe while you're gone. Once it's nice and cool, what you're going to do is you're going to pull it out of the refrigerator. You're going to use your hands. You're going to use a spoon or you're going to use a server, which is a fancy ice cream scoop you get out of the restaurant supply store, and you're going to form three-quarter inch balls. At this point in time, you can coat them in cocoa powder or some other powdery solid, or what's better than chocolate, but chocolate covered chocolate. Um, you put them back in the refrigerator, wait a little bit. In the meantime, you temper some chocolate, which is basically you take a whole bunch of chocolate, bring its temperature up to about 110 degrees, let it cool down below 90, and bring it back up to 90 degrees, which is a working temperature. At this point in time, you take the balls out of the refrigerator, and the fun part, you pick them up, stick your hand, stick your hand into the chocolate, roll around a whole bunch, resist the urge to stick it into your mouth, put it back onto the wax paper. <laughs> the end of the process, you have chocolate-covered truffles and a very chocolate-covered hand. Um, this is also an excellent opportunity to decorate the truffles. Not only does this make it look pretty, but if you have multiple flavors, you need some way to identify these later so that you don't accidentally end up with what you didn't intend, or worse, something you're allergic to. So, truffles are really easy to make. Everybody can make them. But at the end of the day, a truffle really is a transport mechanism for chocolate. <laughs> Creamy ganache center, <laughs> surrounded by a protective chocolate shell, the perfect serving size for your daily dose of chocolate and the perfect dosing size for theobromine. Theobromine is the active ingredient in chocolate. It's a cyclic AMP inhibitor, which basically means that any process that produces cyclic AMP in your brain, theobromine enables those happy, pleasant effects to last longer. So when you're working with chocolate, you can pair it with pleasurable substances or activities to make them last longer. Chocolate, like most things in life, comes on scale from the chocolate food product that is Hershey's to 
micro roasted, locally produced, high quality, organic, fair traded chocolates. Now, all of us who've eaten chocolates, we know that chocolate pairs with a lot of really interesting basic flavors, vanillas, mints, fruit extracts, nuts, these all work well with chocolate. But fundamentally, chocolate will work with just about any combination of flavors, especially liquids and solids. This will include any edible essential oil, edible is the key, uh, lots of flowers, including lavender, espresso, unbelievably well, as well as coffee beans by themselves. Spices, cayenne pepper, surprisingly does work quite well, and just about every alcohol works well with chocolate, especially Bailey's. <laughs> but why stop there? If you're making them yourself, you don't have to limit yourself to what Franz is going to do. Uh, exotic fruits, pomegranate, acai, work incredibly well with chocolate. Extreme spices, habanero, man sauce, actually does work. Cocoa nibs, honey, teas, meat, actually will work with truffles, believe it or not. So. Now that you know all the basics, go home, try truffles. It's, they're really easy to make. Experiment with flavors, experiment with types of chocolate, but most importantly, pair it with interesting and exciting substances and experiences so that the links last longer and you enjoy more of life. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sean.